So is this the best Muppet series that we've had in years? Is this the greatest thing that has the Muppet name on it since The Muppet Show? Let's talk about that. But if we are going to talk about The Muppets, that means that I got to bring back... Yes, it is time that I bring back the Muppet Vlog so that I can go and discuss about the Disney Plus series Muppets Mayhem, which is uh, a series in which uh, is actually a spin-off to the Muppets that we all know and love because this one does not star Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, or Gonzo, or any of those like major recognizable Muppets, but rather the rock group that is within the Muppets, the Electric Mayhem featuring Dr. Teeth, Floyd, Janice, Zoot, Lips, and of course, Animal. And I do believe that this is the first time, or at the very least, the first time in a very long time that we actually have a major Muppet spinoff in which uh, Kermit is not the star. In which, in fact, I'll even say right now that none of those major Muppets actually have made a significant appearance. Uh, we don't actually get to see either Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, or Gonzo, or even some of the others like uh, B Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker or Pepe or Rizzo or whatever, anywhere. The primary Muppets, and uh, for the most part, the only Muppets that do show up in this are just the Electric Mayhem. And I gotta say that I will admit, as a lifelong Muppet fan myself, I was so hyped for this show. I will say that they even put out a really good trailer that showed a lot of promise that there would be so much within this series. Not just the regular Muppet stuff with a lot of laughs and a lot of celebrity cameos, but there's also a compelling story that goes into it. There's a lot of heart that they would promise. Like, they would go and present this as something that really had a lot of potential. And I would even go as far and say that this actually showed a lot more potential than any of the other Muppet projects that have been put out in recent years. Not to say that they were bad or anything like that. Like, I have enjoyed a lot of the recent Muppet stuff, but this one really does stand out in which it had a chance to come out as something really great. In fact, I'll even go as far and say that I was actually one of those weirdos that I was actually a lot more excited for Muppets Mayhem than anything that they would put out that is either Star Wars related or Marvel related that would be exclusive to Disney+. Plus. So I think it is safe to say that I definitely hyped myself up for this show and when it did come out, I did manage to go and take the time to just binge through all the 10 episodes of this series. Or at the very least, if things go really well for Muppets Mayhem, and uh, who knows, maybe there could be a season two in the future. As I am recording this, uh, there's no confirmation of that, but for now, we can pretty much say that I have seen the entire series as is. And we're gonna go and talk about that because I definitely have a lot to say about this. Now, to go and begin, I'm just gonna go and give you a quick summary about what this show is about. And by the way, uh, this entire review will be spoiler free, so I'm not gonna go and reveal any major surprises. So uh, just don't worry if you have not seen the show, uh, like th this review will be completely safe from it. But I will say though, I will hint out on things that if you have seen it, then you know. But again, I will keep this as spoiler free as possible. So the entire story of Muppets Mayhem is about this failing record company called Waxtown Records and this assistant named Nora who tries to pursue to try to save the company and really boost up her career within the industry by bringing on board the Electric Mayhem to go and give them their first album. Because despite the fact that they have been rock legends for literally decades, never once have they actually produced an album because they were just too busy just going around and doing their never ending tour. But slowly but surely she would discover that on the pursuit of trying to create this album, the Electric Mayhem are pretty chaotic, considering that they are Muppets. So she would try her best in order to go and work around their chaotic energy in order to go and actually produce this album. 
which they do. And I'm not saying that because it's spoilers, but I, I think it is safe to say throughout this entire thing, we know that by the end, they would go and produce the album. And besides, there's also another significant factor. Well, they did produce the album. Like, this is the real album in real life. So, I mean, the fact that you can actually go and buy it, it's not necessarily a spoiler. I mean, the fact that I do have it on my hands pretty much indicates that, yeah, they're going to come out fine in the end and that they will reach their goal. Now, I do understand that some people may think that trying to do something like Muppets Mayhem might be a significant risk because you are doing a major Muppet project, a brand new full-on Muppet series, but without any of the major Muppets, like I said before. There's no Kermit, no Miss Piggy, no Gonzo, no Fozzie Bear. None of them show up in the entirety of the whole series or the season for now. But I will say, though, one of the surprising things and one of the best parts about it is that the Electric Mayhem themselves are capable of carrying this entire show. One thing that really got me excited and really happy to see is that one of its best strengths is actually the Electric Mayhem. It's actually the Muppets themselves. And they have actually proven that they are able to go and really carry this entire show by themselves, that there is a significant reason as to why they would go and actually create this uh, entire series just based on these characters, really exploring their personalities. And I will say, as a lifelong Muppet fan myself, I could definitely recognize that Yes, these are the same characters that we all know and love. Like, these are the, the same characters like with Dr. Teeth, with Lloyd, with Janice, with Animal, with Zoot, with Lips. Uh, the, these are the same ones that, like, you recognize them, like, from the past Muppet projects or from the Muppet show and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, they really did build themselves up to give them not just, like, a stronger personality, but also to give them a lot of depth, a lot of background, uh, a lot of history as well. Really going into the lore of the Electric Mayhem and how they all came together in order to become a band, how they all met each other, and what got them into music. How did they discover music as their great passion in their life? And there are some episodes that actually do go very deep into it. Like uh, two great examples are actually Dr. Teeth and uh, Animal, where one, there's one episode that is completely dedicated to Dr. Teeth's backstory about how he actually got his name, Dr. Teeth, and how he struggled to go and has to pick like either to run the family business uh, to be a, an actual dentist or to actually uh, pursue his real passion, which is music. Or there's even uh, Animal, where uh, Floyd actually turns out to be the surrogate father of Animal, where ever since he was a baby, Floyd is the one who actually took care of him and actually influenced him to become the manic and iconic drummer that we know him today. So they really do a lot with these characters and handle them with so much care where we do see many new sides to them. And sometimes we learn about their limits of what they would have. And especially seeing the electric mayhem as a family. And I think that is the most significant part about this. And also another aspect that is massively shocking, but also fantastic about this show is that it is surprisingly very heartfelt. The fact that we do see the Electric Mayhem as an entire family where, yes, there can be a lot of conflicts, but the reason why they are the legendary rock group that we know them today, the fact that we know them as these like big legends in the music industry is because they are a family that even though they could be so chaotic, there's kind of like this magical formula and this great family type love that they have for one another that really does make it work and that it flows onto their music in order to provide great entertainment and to give everyone a good time. 
the fact that they are having a great time and that they are at their best when they are all with each other is the reason why everybody enjoys the music of the electric mayhem and really goes deep into that heart aspect so the emotion the emotional core is very strong with this so you will end up catching a lot of feels uh for characters like animal or floyd or dr teeth and many more so the way they handled that is just absolutely beautiful and just very tender as well but of course considering that we are talking about the rock band of the muppets music is an essential theme to Muppets Mayhem. In fact, I would even say it's kind of the main thing that as much as it is about the Electric Mayhem, it's also about music. And not only do we get a whole bunch of musical segments where I would say in just about every episode, there's at least one musical number that has been given to us uh, from the Electric Mayhem. And I'll just say right now, the songs are absolutely awesome. Like, uh, in every single one they do, like they're just absolute bangers. Rather it be original songs that they would go and produce for the show itself, or they would do a whole bunch of covers as well. Like uh, they actually start off the entire series with uh, I Wanna Rock and Roll All Night, or uh, they, even, they would even sing Love by the Beatles, for example. So I'll just say now that if you're a fan of rock music, then uh, the Electric Mayhem definitely does deliver on that. And it will give you that extra dose of of uh, entertainment for you onto the entire show. So that's definitely a great plus right there. And like I said before, the music itself is actually very solid, but also in terms of the theme of it all, the fact that it is about the music, uh, it also does very well where it does play within the emotional core, where it does provide some messages about what music means to everyone, not just to the electric mayhem, but also the power that it supplies, like the power of just uniting people, of uh, the power of bringing smiles to everyone. Like it shows the positive impact of music and why is it so important to everyone, uh, in including the electric mayhem. Uh, to all the characters that are attached to them and to the entire audience, to the fans of the Electric Mayhem, in fact. And not only that, but also this music theme uh, can also play around pretty well in terms of the narrative. There's even one episode that I gotta say is fantastic, is actually this entire parody of the documentary Get Back where the Electric Mayhem uh, suddenly find themselves in this uh, documentary where you actually got Kevin Smith coming in to go and uh, film their process of how they would go and create their music. But then again, you get the similar types of conflicts uh, that did occur in Get Back and even like the whole format that they would do. Honestly, I find that episode to be very, very clever, a, a lot of fun. And I would say like, amongst one of the best episodes in there. Uh, in terms of the entire music theme, rather it be the use of music in the uh, show itself, or how they would go and use that in terms of their themes and in terms of their morals, they did a great job as well. But of course, considering that we are talking about a Muppet show, there needs to be some Muppet style elements. And even though we don't have any of the main recognizable Muppets in there, this definitely does feel like a full on Muppet show. Like that Muppet spirit that has been here since Jim Henson, like it is still alive and well within Muppets Mayhem. And one thing that really is prevalent of that is uh, the comedy, in which I will say the comedy in this series is absolutely fantastic. Like there have been many moments that it would just go and give out a great laugh. And one thing that really does stand out in the show that really does make it feel like a Muppet style show, and especially how the comedy is very much Muppet-like, is how it is able to go and use the element of surprise. Even though this is live action, there is this part of it that kind of feels like this 
out of control cartoon, like this wacky, almost Tex Avery style cartoon where at every moment you gotta go and expect the unexpected. And I feel like this show actually does it very well. In fact, I would even go as far and say that it actually does it better than most other shows or most other projects in recent years. You never know what's going to be happening next. You never know what the electric mayhem will suddenly go and bring out. Uh, and it's from that element of surprise and that unexpected tone that can really catch you off guard and often can go and give you a great laugh. So in terms of that Muppet style comedy, they really did nail that. And not to mention that I would even say that there are times when it could be surprisingly edgy. Now, I'm not saying that it's going full on edgelord and it's like constantly pushing the envelope, but I'll just say that there are times where they can get away with things that I am just shocked that Disney would even just slip it by. There's even one joke that I will say that, uh, well, without spoiling anything, of course, but um, honestly, it's something that I think it's safe to say that for Muppet fans, we still need to go and try to process the fact that it is canon. And if you've seen that moment, if you've seen that episode, you know what I mean about what specifically they reference that now it is officially canon to the Muppet lore. And also, I will say, another thing that really does help out with the comedy is actually all the celebrity cameos. And this is also another thing uh, that does really make it a Muppet-style series, because the Muppets are very well known to just bring in so many special guest stars again and again and again. And even in this one, it's just jam-packed with them. And also, I just want to go and say on a side note, because admittedly, I did almost forget to mention this, uh, despite Despite the fact that no, none of the cameos uh, do feature either like Kermit or Miss Piggy or whatever, they do have this one new Muppet here, and it is the owner of Waxtown Records or Nora's boss. Uh, her name is Penny. And honestly, I feel like she's a great new addition to the Muppets because the best way to describe Penny is if you imagine Roz from Monsters, Inc., except she has a romantic past with Mike Wazowski. I know it kind of sounds weird, but that's the best way to go and put it with Penny because she's kind of like this... Um, old, well, not, not an old hag, but this old woman who sounds like she's kind of given up on life or she kind of has this massive don't care attitude. And she actually has a past romantic history with Dr. Teeth, especially. And uh, seeing her character evolve throughout the show, it was also very fun. And I feel like they did handle Penny well as much as, um, as the rest of the Electric Mayhem, especially with the romantic angle where we see that relationship kind of evolve where the where the love between Penny and Dr. Teeth is kind of rekindled in a way. So that definitely adds a lot of amusement. So de definitely another uh, great point to give with the inclusion of Penny. But anyways, uh, going back to the celebrity cameos, those ones, honestly, they are absolutely fantastic, even though there's like a whole bunch of them. And I, I can understand that it can feel a bit overwhelming that sometimes there's just way too many that would just pop out all at once. But in this series, however, I feel like they handle them pretty well, especially with how they do work within the narrative. There is no celebrity cameo that's there that feels out of place or that feels completely pointless, especially when a good chunk of them are technically icons in the music industry. Yeah, you do have some other people that, um, you know, that they would go and make a, a sudden appearance that uh, are not necessarily related to music. Like you do have a moment with uh, Cheech and Chong 
or you would have Morgan Freeman suddenly coming in to make an appearance. And I'll just say right now, I'm not going to go and specify what he has done, but his appearance there is honestly fantastic. I would consider him one of the best cameos in the show. But um, honestly, with all these uh, cameos and appearances, they actually do great in terms of the narrative to help advance the story with what is going on, but also to go and add into the comedy. And a big part Part of that is because of how you can tell that they're just having a lot of fun. Like they're not there to go and grab an extra paycheck or whatever. You could tell that these people are just excited to be a part of the project, that they can be a part of something that is related to the Muppets. And from there, they can go and just have a good time. And the fact that they have a good time, it translates to the audience having a good time. So from there, the use of all these celebrity cameos, it's just great, honestly, with uh, especially with how they would go and interact with uh, all the Muppets and especially how it feels like everybody knows one another that uh, the Electric Mayhem has all these surprising connections. It it's all great. It's all a lot of fun. And also, I'll even add because like, this is also something that like I truly love as well that I'm also a major fan of. The fact that we do have a Weird Al cameo onto this is just fantastic. Honestly, I feel like it was a moment that feels inevitable. Like it's about time that finally Weird Al Yankovic shows up to make a cameo appearance or to be a part of a project related to the Muppets because Weird Al is one of those guys that or, or it's just one of those people on this earth that is kind of like a real life Muppet. So it was only a matter of time that we see that massive crossover. Oh, and another side note that I just want to go and state right now that episode in which Weird Al is in, I would have to say is my favorite. It's the fifth episode of the show. And I'm not saying it's my favorite because it has Weird Al in it, although that's like a great benefit. But also the episode itself is just, just wild and crazy and just so much fun, especially with, um, and, and not to mention, uh, like one of those episodes that's a little bit edgy in the way that they managed to get away with things that I'm surprised that Disney would just let them slip by, but it was when the Electric Mayhem would go and uh, they would arrive on this desert to go and find some inspiration to go and create new music. And uh, what happened was that they accidentally ate some very expired marshmallows and almost everyone is just hallucinating. And you even have this one moment in which everything becomes stop motion. So it's very cool to see. It is really trippy. It is wild. And I'm gonna be very honest, I'm wondering where can I get those marshmallows? Because honestly, whatever trip they're in, I want to be in on that. But anyways, uh, going back to what I was talking about, there is also another thing that I do want to bring up that is related to the Muppet spirit of this entire series. Like, yes, the celebrity cameos and the comedy is very Muppety, and they managed to work that out very, very well. But at the same time, there's also a whole lot of Easter eggs. Oh, and I, I almost forgot to mention that technically, with all the musical segments that we have in here and how music plays a very prominent theme, that's also another aspect that really does play into the Muppet spirit of all this. But anyways, going back to what I was talking about, the Easter eggs in there is also very prevalent, where if you are a lifelong Muppet fan, you will notice a whole bunch of different small Easter eggs from the Muppet show or some of the Electric Mayhem's other appearances. And uh, honestly, they're kind of like a really nice bonus and a very nice, uh, a very nice nod to the entire legacy of the Electric Mayhem and uh, the entire history that is related to what we know with the Electric Mayhem. And I will say the best thing about these uh, Easter eggs is that they are not intrusive at all. They're not the kind in which the show would try to make a big deal and it feels like the series would just be gatekeeping from people outside of the Muppet fandom. If there are elements that, uh, may, that are prevalent to the plot line that is technically a massive Easter egg, 
then they would go and actually take the time to go and explain it very well to newcomers or to casual viewers. Uh, one great example is that there was one episode in which they heavily discuss about uh, their segment in The Muppet Show in which they sing Rock and Robin, which I will say for me uh, is actually really nice to check out and is uh, really uh, a really nice throwback as well, considering that um, uh, here's a, like a personal history uh, that I will mention. That's actually my introduction to uh, the Electric Mayhem in the Muppets. I remember I had a VHS in which I would play all the time. And uh, one of the segments they would have is them singing Rock and Robin in the Muppet Show. And they would also bring that up as well. But that thing is not there just to be an Easter egg. They also really play that along as a plot line. They also explain themselves. Why is it relevant to the Electric Mayhem? Why is it that they have a, a personal connection with Rock and Robin? So they actually do manage to work that out pretty well. So this is all to say that even the Easter eggs, they handled that very nicely where they are not intrusive to newcomers, but for those like major Muppet fans like myself, they are a great bonus. Like they are very nice to have uh, to go and see like all those little nods, those little references, you know, kind of uh, kind of like having your little Leonardo DiCaprio moment where you could go and point out where you could say it's like, I recognize that. So it's, it's very nice, uh, honestly. So uh, that's another thing that I will say that it feels great to have that little like bonus for fans like myself. However, as much as I can praise this entire show, as much as there are many things that they do get it right, there is one problem with this series that I do have to mention. And this isn't just a regular problem within the show that can be a bit bothersome from time to time. I would even go as far and say that this might be a bit of the Achilles heel of the entire series where not everything can give me a great time. And there are some moments that I would say, yeah, they can be pretty bad. And that is regarding, especially with Nora, played by Lily Singh. And my problem with Nora is that not only is she a pretty generic character, but the personality that she would go and convey throughout the series it's very unappealing as well. She's pretty much the typical failing business person trying to do the best she can in order to really boost up her career and to try to go and save the business. And she'll try to go and do everything she can uh, in order to make that work, including aspects that are pretty immoral. And one thing that can also be very problematic is that, especially with how they introduce her in, in the first few episodes, is that she can really have this sleazy personality where she is not above uh, lying to people. She's not above like the whole uh, moral about faking it till you make it. Like, I know technically there is an episode in which they go and like, emphasize the moral that the fake it till you make it mantra is a flat out lie and stuff like that. But still though, she would keep on doing like these sleazy moves onto the electric mayhem. Or there have been many instances where she would put herself above everyone else that it really does leave a bad taste in your mouth about her, making her this very unappealing character. And yet the series tries to build her as the down to earth one the human being amongst the entire chaos that is within the electric mayhem, the Kermit the Frog, if you will. And in that regard, it just feels like a massive downgrade. And considering that her personality is just so unappealing, I feel like I end up zoning out of the show that whenever the whenever the series really does focus on Nora, that's when honestly my cares about whatever is going on is just completely out the window. And I end up checking on my phone about like what else is going on within the world. And then suddenly when we get back to the electric mayhem, that's when suddenly whoop, now my focus is just back onto it. 
But yeah, I'm just really not a fan of Nora. And even if the show would keep on trying again and again to make me like her, I just cannot because I don't know if it's because of the acting by Lily Singh with her personality of trying to make her a bit of a sleaze bag, or if it's really because of the writing that's making her a, a, a massive sleaze bag. But I just don't find her to be that appealing of a character, or especially when compared to the Electric Mayhem. In fact, I would even go as far and say that the like the entirety of the main human characters are very much like that as well, where they share that similar sleazebag like personality where they leave a very bad imp impression in your mouth, and yet the show would try very hard to make you like them. Uh, this also includes uh, JJ, who's kind of like a rival love interest to Nora. You also got Nora's sister. And then there's also Moog, in which I'll say like in the first few episodes when he is the uh, Electric Mayhem fanboy, I would say he is the most tolerable of the human characters, but then by the second half, they try to introduce this love triangle between Nora and JJ and Moog to the point where suddenly my interest with the guy is just gone. And even in terms of that plot line, trying to make uh, this weird love triangle uh, and like making it all about the human characters, it's like, honestly, it, it feels like a complete waste of time. You know, the series failed to make me like them or to make me connect with them. So honestly, it, I'm just very much put off by it. And not to mention the fact that whatever plot lines do show up related to the human characters, like it's not just them that are generic, but also the narratives as well, where they can be easily predictable, that they can feel like a bit of a drag. And I would even say that the plot lines are a bit of a weaker point to the electric mayhem, because you know what those outcomes are going to be. You know what the tempo of those stories are going to go. And in that regard, like, yeah, there are a lot of things that can get you engaged with it, but a lot of it actually has to do with the human characters as well. I would even go as far and say that it feels like when you go behind the scenes, the filmmakers they know exactly what to do with the electric mayhem. They know like whatever is related to the Muppet spirit, rather it be like anything that is connected to the Muppets, like with the electric mayhem or all the celebrity cameos or the, the uh, comedy or even the heart of it and even the music, they know what to do. They are on point and they know how to go and execute that beautifully. But then when it comes to the human characters, when you bring in people like Nora or Moog or Nora's sister or JJ or whatever, when you bring that into the factor, they suddenly feel a bit clueless. It feels like the filmmakers kind of treat them as an afterthought, but then the executives would come in and try to put in a lot more of a significant importance to them. So that's why like they would try to be a bit of a dominant force around the, uh, around the same level or even a little bit more so than the electric mayhem. And that is the one thing that I will say is the most frustrating part about watching the electric mayhem. And especially as a Muppet fan myself, where we do see how they would easily nail all the Muppet aspects. Like this is some of the best Muppet elements that they would put out in years. I would say that like, or, or maybe this might be a bit of a hot take. This is some of the best Muppet moments during the Disney era. Like they managed to do it so well, especially with all the members of the Electric Mayhem, with all the comedy, with the music, with the heart. Like they do that so well, but then you would have Lily Singh and you would have the other human characters suddenly coming in and try to take the spotlight away from the electric mayhem where Lily Singh is trying to make it her show as much or maybe even more so than the electric mayhem. And those aspects are just so weak that it kind of makes me angry that, and just shout out, why is it that I'm wasting my time with you when you got these other components that work out so much better. Like I want to spend a lot more time with the electric mayhem than her. I mean, it's called Muppets Mayhem, not Lily Singh Mayhem. I'm here to watch the electric mayhem. And they are the ones 
ones who are really delivering it the most. Not Lily Singh and not the other human characters as well. I mean, maybe with the acting, they tried to do their best, but the materials they were given, I would say that it's pretty much hopeless. So as much as I would have a good time with all the things that they would do right, I cannot ignore that there are also times when I'm put off by this show or that I would get frustrated because they're not giving me enough of, a, of the good parts and they would just focus on the things that honestly I don't care about. And even at that, it also kind of messes things up um, with the finale. Now, I'm not go going to say anything in terms of what actually happened in there, but I will say that honestly, they did end off the show on a bit of a weak note uh, because of how it is so story centric and that how it does revolve a lot on the human characters. And even with the electric mayhem, with the uh, direction that they want to try to go with them, it just didn't really work out as much, especially with such a predictable plot that they would go and provide. However, with that said, would I say that this completely ruined Muppets mayhem for me? And even though, yeah, it can be a flawed show, honestly, I would say no. I still had a great time and there are still a lot of really enjoyable moments that I did like. So overall, when it comes to the Muppets Mayhem, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily the best thing to come out of the Muppets, but I will say this is a massive improvement and this has been the best that they have been in a long time. Uh, as a Muppet fan myself, it really is encouraging to see how the Muppets have grown ever since uh, the 2015 Muppets. And even though with, with each new project that they would do, they would go and take just small steps, but they are at least a step forward, especially with what we have seen afterwards with stuff like Muppets Now and then Muppets Haunted Mansion and now with the the Muppets Mayhem. Like we are seeing that they have grown a lot better. And especially with this one where the best aspects of it is related to the Muppets. Now, yes, I will say that there are a lot of problems with it. Uh, the story and the narratives of them can be pretty weak and they can have a lot of, of unappealing human characters like Nora. But on the other hand, I am still very satisfied with the show and I still had a great time with the elements that are related to the Muppets. I really like with what they have done with the electric mayhem, still staying true to their characters and really giving them a lot of depth, both as a, a band and as the individual characters themselves. I love the comedy. There's a lot of moments that do give out a great laugh. Um, it's surprisingly heartfelt in which you really get emotionally connected with the electric mayhem. The use of music, both in terms of theming and the actual songs themselves are really awesome. Uh, the celebrity cameos are great. So overall, honestly, I had more of a great time, more so than not. So from there, I actually do feel pretty satisfied with my experience with the Electric Mayhem. Oh, by the way, before I go and continue, I would just like to say that now would be a good time to go and uh, like this review and subscribe if you haven't yet, if you did enjoy this review. Uh, I definitely have a lot more Muppet Madness coming up, so you will see that in my videos, I could share that same kind of fun-filled chaotic energy as the electric mayhem. So if I would go and give this a rating, it is pretty tough to consider because in a way it is a pretty big mixed bag because there are things in here that really do suck, but there are also a lot of really good things. But honestly, I think I would go and give this a 7 out of 10. I think that would go and fit that pretty well in which, yeah, the flaws are pretty prevalent and yeah, when it gets bad, it could be pretty awful. But again, there are a lot more great things about the show than not. And the great things will be a very satisfying experience. Like honestly, it's witnessing those great aspects that honestly makes me feel happy that I did watch The Electric Mayhem and that honestly, it makes me feel more positive about the Muppets that they are heading towards a better direction. Now, at this point, 
if they would go and make a season two, because I'll just say right now, like by the time I'm recording this and by the time that I release this review, uh, we're not 100% sure if there is going to be a season two in the first place. But if that does happen, Honestly, I would be down to go and watch it. And the only thing that I would ask is that if we spend more time with the Electric Mayhem themselves and less time with the human characters. Like I know for continuity purposes that they would have to go and keep characters like Moog and Nora and stuff like that. But honestly, if we are gonna move forward, they should put those human characters more on the side. Like, make it less about them, make it less about what's going on with their emotions and their backstories and whatever, and make it more about the Electric Mayhem. And if they would go and try to correct that error, if they would go and actually do that, then honestly, at that point, that's when I would say that, yes, this would be the best series that the Muppets has put out in years, or maybe even the best that they have put out since The Muppet Show. And honestly, just thinking about it, like that whole statement about, oh, is this the best thing that the Muppets put out in years? Honestly, in that regard, I would say maybe because on a technical level like i said before they have been making significant improvements over the years but i mean i guess you could say recently things have not been well for them since the 2015 muppets so i guess i could say that technically yes it is the best muppet series in years but at least by a few years they have not yet reached the same level like when they were at their prime with the muppet show but if this progress continues if the muppets do get better with every new major project that they would go and put out i feel like maybe eventually we will one day have that one amazingly great muppet series that will put them back in the spotlight and that we will be enjoying them as much as how they were once with the Muppet show. I mean, like it has, it is possible. We, they can definitely do that. We have seen some instances where the Muppets have been so beloved after Jim Henson's passing. And I do believe that one day there is going to be that one Muppet project that will put them back in a major spotlight and it will be considered like, one of the best things of the year. And especially with the Electric Mayhem, I think that is a massive proof. If you go and compare to how they are uh, with Muppets Mayhem compared to uh, the 2015 Muppets, we are seeing a progression and we are seeing improvements in terms of quality. And if that continues, then watch out because we're gonna have something amazing from the Muppets pretty soon. And with that said, I think that should do it for this uh, special little comeback of the Muppet Vlog. And with this, well, uh, I guess technically you could say my review of Muppets Mayhem. So with that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for uh, listening to me ramble on in regards to Muppets Mayhem and to just go and express my love for the Muppets. And with all that said, until next time, see you later, dudes.